Welcome back everyone to Stargate Update. This is the latest news headlines from the world of Stargate for August 2021. Big thanks to everyone for your feedback on this new series so far. Here's what we're talking about this month. There's a new fan campaign to celebrate the history of Stargate and also rally for a new fourth in-canon television series. Joseph Malazzi is talking about reviving Dark Matter. Jessica Steen is on the record talking about why her character, Elizabeth Weir, ended up recast for Stargate Atlantis. And more recent headlines from the world of Stargate. Let's get into it. Let's start here with some of our quicker news. It's been confirmed Christopher Judge, Stargate's own Teal'c, is voicing Marvel's Black Panther. This is for the Marvel Avengers video game. The new DLC War for Wakanda is due out in August. You know what, they released a trailer several months ago and there's one line from T'Challa in the trailer for the expansion pass and a bunch of us thought, you know what, that sounds like Chris Judge. That sounds like Teal'c, or if you're a gamer, that sounds like Kratos from God of War, the other big character that, that Chris voices. It's confirmed now. Christopher Judge is voicing T'Challa in the War for Wakanda expansion pass. If you've been playing the Marvel's Avengers video game, you know this is coming out soon. The DLC expansion passes is coming in August. It does need the base game in order to play this. Uh, really exciting news, really excited for Chris to be taking on another iconic character. Next up, the big exciting thing for Stargate fans at San Diego Comic-Con last month was, of course, the cast reunion for Stargate Atlantis. The cast of Stargate Atlantis got back together for a special panel event at Comic-Con, hosted, in fact, by our own friend David Reed over at Dial the Gate. Uh, David Nichol, Rachel Luttrell, Robert Picardo, Tori Higginson, David Hewlett, Paul McGilley, and Rainbow Sun Franks joined David here for a special event. This one, if you were watching Comic-Con at home this year, uh, on Saturday night, there was a 45-minute version of this panel that uh, streamed at the Comic-Con YouTube channel. But if you want to watch the whole thing, the whole thing's actually twice that long. The whole thing's an hour and a half. Uh, and you can watch that now. There's a link in the description below to this news page, uh, and you'll find it here embedded in the store. You can watch the full 90-minute panel, or just head over to youtube.com slash dialthegate, and you can find the cast reunion there. This was a ton of fun. It was a lot of fun to see this group of people back together uh, and reminiscing about the old days on SGA. Believe it or not, it's been 17 years since the show premiered, uh, if you want to feel as old as I do but definitely check that one out. Now into our top headlines, fans have launched a 365 Days of Stargate campaign to rally for a new show. Uh, this fan campaign is started by our friends over at Stargate Now Europe, and GateWorld's jumped on board. We're hoping other fan groups are going to jump on board and support it as well. Really, there's, there's two things that are going on here. One is 365 Days of Celebrating Stargate, celebrating one episode per day, uh, moving through the entire TV canon. Uh, also some of the movies in there. This is actually leading up to a really exciting end date because a year from now, believe it or not, we're going to be at the 25th anniversary of the premiere of Stargate SG-1. So this campaign has uh, one episode per day all the way up until the 26th of July. And then the 27th of July, 2022 is SG-1's 25th anniversary. So it's a celebration of Stargate, but what we're doing is, uh, in all the tweets and conversation on social media, we're also tagging Amazon Prime, Amazon Studios, and asking them for a new fourth live-action Stargate television series. Something that's set in the existing continuity, in the canon that was created by Brad Wright and Jonathan Glasner and Robert Cooper uh, and all the other writers. So I'm excited about this. I mean, insofar as we hope Amazon is listening to fans, we want to make sure that the, the fan voice is clear, that the fan voice is united. Brad Wright does have a new show ready to go. He's got a pitch. He's evidently got a script. Uh, Amazon is in the process of buying MGM. They don't own MGM yet, but we're hoping that that deal closes maybe by the end of the year. But meanwhile, they're talking. Meanwhile, they're lining up their ducks to see which, which IP that MGM owns 
they're going to be able to make use of first. And as we've said in the past, Stargate is really low hanging fruit. Stargate is ready to go. The audience is there. The audience is, is thirsty for it. I sure want a new show. So this is uh, celebrating Stargate for 365 days, one episode per day, and also applying, rather than a tweet storm that's focused on you know a single day and getting a hashtag trending, this is sustained pressure over the course of a year. And hopefully by the time we get there, hopefully by the time we reach the 25th anniversary of SG-1, um, we'll have news. We'll have an announcement even of a fourth live action show. Wouldn't that be great? So I hope if you're on social media, you join in on this. Uh, celebrate Stargate, celebrate each individual daily episode using the hashtag we want Stargate and or also the hashtag 365 days of Stargate. Next up, former Stargate writer and executive producer Joseph Malazzi. After Stargate, you know, he went on and created Dark Matter along with his partner, Paul Mully. Dark Matter ran for three seasons on Sci-Fi Channel out of a planned five-year arc, and it left off with this massive cliffhanger. Uh, but Dark Matter fans have been scrambling for years to try and get some sort of revival, uh, whether it's a, a movie or a miniseries or get the show picked up by another network, maybe even a comic book or a novel. Uh, Joe's really active on, on social media, and so he's made it clear uh, he doesn't really want to finish this story in the form of a novel. He's not a novelist, but he has said he's working on a, a new plan to try and get it back on screen. Uh, Joe has he's talked about this off and on for a few years now, but now it looks like things are getting serious. Uh, Joe Malazzi has been doing a rewatch and discussing Dark Matter on Mondays, with fans over at the Orville Nation YouTube channel and podcast. So they've been kind of watching through the series, and when they got to the series finale, the, the third season finale, which is that cliffhanger, Joe wrote, Just finished the Dark Matter season three finale, and I'm angry all over again. I'm going to start working on a pitch for the miniseries, and we'll look to take it out in August. I'll keep you posted. So he's been talking about wanting to do a miniseries for a while, and he's had conversations with potential partners over the years. What's new here is that things are getting serious. He's going back and really spending time on this idea. He's retooling a pitch for a miniseries, and he's looking to take it out this month and start pitching it. Really hope this works out. Really hope that we get a payoff uh, and a conclusion to the Dark Matter story. Last up here, if you've been watching the channel, you might have seen some comments last month from Jessica Steen, who played Dr. Weir on Stargate SG-1, at least when Dr. Weir was first introduced in the seventh season finale, Lost City. Of course, by the time season eight rolled around and Stargate Atlantis was getting ready to take off in 2004, the character had been recast. Canadian actress Tori Higginson took over the role from Jessica Steen. We've wondered for going on 18 years now why this character was recast before they went on to the Atlantis TV series. So Jessica has a couple of explanations for this. If you haven't seen the video or read this coverage before, take a look at the link in the description below to read the whole thing. This piece is actually rather long, um, but let me just recap it for you here in brief. There's a couple of clips that you can watch of Jessica talking about this on Dial the Gate. Uh, if you're interested in this bit of Stargate history, I encourage you to watch both of these clips that are embedded at the link in the description below. This boils down to two things. Jessica says, number one, she thinks she just bugged the producers. She just drove them crazy by asking them so many questions. Part of that is because she confesses she didn't really do her homework. She didn't really kind of explore the whole lore of Stargate. Um, part of that, she says, was deliberate because her character of Dr. Weir was totally green when she came in. She was dropped into the middle of Stargate Command. She was made to be the base commander by the president. And she was in over her head and learning to feel her way through it. That's That was the character's story in Lost City. So Jessica decided... Uh, to do that herself. But she also knew that this character was intended to continue on to Stargate Atlantis, a series that could run five, six, seven years, just like SG-1 had done. 
So uh, she ended up, she says, asking the producers quite a lot of questions about, you know, where the character is now, where the character might end up going. And she just drove them crazy. The second reason that she gives is she was very committed to Burning Man. Uh, as, a, as a younger actress and a creative person, Burning Man, right, it's this big festival in the Nevada desert. For people who do Burning Man, it's, it's kind of a full commitment. And it has less of a stigma today, I think. But back in 2003, when they were shooting Lost City, uh, Burning Man focuses on community, creative arts, and self-expression. Today, it draws nearly 80,000 people a year. In 2003, however, many perceived the event as little more than a bunch of naked hippies doing drugs in the desert. So Jessica was actively involved in planning and producing an event for Burning Man while Lost City was filming. She had a day off in the middle of filming the episode where she says she flew back to California and packed a truck to take out to Nevada and then flew back to Vancouver to finish shooting. And uh, she had told the producers that uh, she had to be out by a certain day because she had a family reunion to go to. Uh, it ended up getting back to the producers that her family reunion was actually uh, her commitment to Burning Man. And they, they evidently concluded that uh, she didn't have the commitment that they were looking for for a long-term TV series. The irony of that, Jessica says, is that when she does something, she gives it her whole self, and, and if they had brought her on to Stargate Atlantis, she would have given that show the same level of commitment that she gave to this project. So it's a, it's a really interesting bit of Stargate history. If you're interested in the history of the production, if you love the character of Elizabeth Weir, definitely look into this story more uh, and get a chance to hear this in her own words. Here's our poll this month. We asked Stargate fans, which version of Dr. Weir do you prefer? Do you like Jessica Steen's performance from Lost City? Tori Higginson, who had the advantage of playing the role for three plus years on Stargate Atlantis. Michelle Morgan came back and played a version of the character in the fifth season Atlantis episode, Ghost in the Machine. Over on GateWorld.net, these are surprising results. 29% of you said Jessica Steen is my favorite Dr. Weir. Tori Higginson pulls 62% of the vote. Um, I expected this to be more dominantly Tori, because again, Tori got to play the character for over three years, and she has a really big fan base. Really good turnout here for Jessica Steen and fans of her version of Dr. Weir. We asked the same question right here on the YouTube channel, and these results are more like what I expected. Tori Higginson here is running away with this with 81% of the vote. Jessica Steen gets 10%, Michelle Morgan 3%. And here's our featured comment. This one comes from Rhinox0110. Rhinox says, it's hard to pick one. All have their merits, certainly, but Tori played the character the longest and has my respect for portraying the character in Atlantis even though I wish they would have fleshed out the character more before effectively killing her off only to bring her back, kinda. You know, I feel exactly the same way about the character and the way that Dr. Weir was written in Atlantis. There were some episodes where she really stood out and it was obvious the, the role that she had, her leadership, her butting heads with her bosses back at the IOA on Earth. There's some really great standout Weir episodes. I'm thinking of episodes where she gets to go off world, like season two's Condemned. But I think Rhinox is onto something here. They didn't flesh out the character, her background, really what she had to contribute to the team quite as much as I wish that they would have before she was written off the show. One more thing while I've got you, we're looking for new content creators to come on board the team at GateWorld. We're looking for folks who can come up with an idea, write a script, record it, do the editing all the way through to the end of the process. Uh, if you're interested in making some Stargate videos for the channel and making money doing it, send me an email at webmaster at gateworld.net. I'd love to meet you and see what you can do. Thanks once again for watching the Stargate update news series. This is a new format for us, so let us know in the comments below if you have any thoughts on the format, what you like, and what you'd like to see us cover here. We have brand new Stargate videos on the channel here every single week if you want to subscribe. Our pattern has been Monday's Dial the Gate interview clips, Wednesday's we do Stargate Omnipedia videos, and then Friday's is kind of everything else. It's lore videos, lists, news items like this, 
uh, or just whatever is going on that week. Look for the video count to be a little bit lighter for the rest of the summer as my family's going on vacation and trying to start to make plans for the fall. Meanwhile, visit our website at gateworld.net for all of these headlines plus what's breaking right now.